Howdy there, YouTubers. Um, it's been a while since I have uploaded. It, well, it feels like a while. Um, we went to the beach as a family and got back and have been resettling um, just back into the swing of things with school, getting things ready for school. And um, yeah, God is doing a lot. Um, it has been really intense um, since... I've been posting more and also went back on Facebook, which was a prayerful decision for me, but I just felt like the Lord wanted me to, um, to occupy space there and allow his presence to just remain on that platform. Um, so that's pretty exciting to me because I was not expecting that from him, but in that, I'm just resting, and so this is like a really new place to be, in, and it just feels exciting, because um, I, I think that he's doing that, like, in a lot of people in in the church, and in, in his in his bride, and he has, he's showing himself through his, his people, his, his kids, those that find refuge under him, and we all have you know, issues, and we all have parts to our story that, um, that there's brokenness that draws us to him, and he never despises that, so, like, where others might despise the church because they haven't always been open arms to them, God is bringing justice and, and bringing healing to those areas where we haven't opened our, our, our arms um, to the lost, but in that he is defining himself to, um, those that would consider themselves black sheep and showing his perfect timing and uh, revealing his nature. And, um, he's doing that. He's always had the rightful authority in each of our lives, you know, from the time that we're born until the time that we breathe our last breath that is truly ordained by him and in his timing. Um, but it is also in this earth, in this, in this time, in this earth. And so, um, it's really exciting cause like he's preaching to him, his, his children, he's preaching to his bride. He's preaching to himself. Um, his word is alive and active and it, it's, what brings him glory is his word in us just, you know, coming to life. And it truly is him in us that is every good thing is like where, where people could say, Oh, this Sarah, you have a great smile or you've got great hair or a, a bright complexion. It's because he, he in me and he, he knows where I go to him and he then is illuminated in, you know, some of the deepest areas of insecurity for, for myself. And, you know, we can all try to psychoanalyze with each other and like, how, how are you affected? Like, how do you, like the humility and humanity of each other, but he is God and he is, he is tender with us and he covers us and, um, and he is judge. And so like, you know, we can't judge another and, and, and take the speck out of their eye when we have a log in our own. And um, he is just doing a beautiful thing and um, proving what needs to be proved, proving himself in people, um, doing a work on this earth that our natural minds don't quite understand or grasp. And it's like, wait, how is this making sense? And, um, it's an entering in process. It's a process that the prophets of old talked about, that the, that the New Testament and um, the early church and Paul um, preached. Um, and that is when his holiness, the Holy Spirit, is hovering over the waters of this earth. He brings his the purity of himself. He manifests himself in his bride. And what an honor that I get to... to to prophesy that that's, that's his word. Um, you know, any 
beheading on my part that's like, uh, shut her up, is, is a ploy of the enemy, and I just, in the name of Yeshua, um, bind that, and just say, Yeshua, have your way. You are our Messiah. You are the Messiah of this whole earth. I ask that you have your way, <clears throat> and that our voices, um, would speak your word and would be heard and because it's important you want our voices to be heard so uh yeah i'm just excited um i wanted to worship so um i felt you know prompted to go ahead and um just you know i was worshiping listening to to some worship music in my ears earbuds and was dancing um, around the house and just singing loudly at the same time and all these expressions together um, that the world says you can't do like it's just you can't be a singer slash dancer slash slash speaker slash debater slash teacher but the sons of God those that God is revealing in himself are all those things because they've been resting and abiding in creator God and he is proving himself in his bride and he has prepared the earth for such a time as this and this is very much an Esther sort of experience on this earth and there are people that have been tested in such ways that are like the catalysts or the 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 speakers of his truth in their own lives, their testimony. And I believe that he has given that to me. There's a testimony in my story that, um, that then when spoken, spoken in truth, it, the word of God going forward then affects someone else in the way that the Holy Spirit has cultivated for their healing, for their you know, their walk with, with him. And that's how the Lord redeems his bride. Like we are all being made one in him. And so every spot and blemish that, you know, has been programmed of the enemy, Jesus binds up and he, and he makes whole with, with his burial cloth that he wrapped himself in. And gosh, that reminds me of a beautiful poem. My one of my dear friends, Janie McManus, who is 75 years old, and she wrote this beautiful poem. She writes all the time, and this was just a, a text, really, she sent to me, and it was a, it was a beautiful poem. I was like, can I please sing that? Um, so I may. Um, I need some collab days with some friends that are all musicians, and I just believe that we're all going to be writing and producing music, Um on YouTube and, and, and via different channels. So I'm just going to speak that out there. Um, it is a little nerve wracking to just like prophesy things that the Lord has put in my heart for years. And, um, and it's like, okay, is now the time? And it's like, man, it's just, it's wild. It's like a wild experience of, of him. And I was telling my daughter, Hannah, um, cause she was, uh, she was, you know, sharing a victory in her life. And I just said, let me put my phone down so I could try to, um, find a spot for it. Um, I hear sunshine in the background. No, I'm not sure that's the cat. Um, so I was telling Hannah that, like she's on the tip of a spear and she's moving forward and she can feel all the winds blowing at her, the winds of change. And it can make her feel like just anxious, like, Oh my gosh, what's going on. But on that tip, like she is met with like right in front of her, the eyes of God, like Jesus looking right back at her. And that is for every believer of, of, Christ, of Jesus, the true Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua, that's his name in Hebrew, um, 
our Messiah, the world's Messiah, who, who came and gave his body up 2,000 years ago. He, he came in bodily form, spoken pure seed of the Holy Spirit, born of a virgin. This was an incredible miracle that, that happened and was recognized in history like as a true person that walked this earth. Um, and signs and wonders followed him, you know, everywhere he went. And then afterwards, all that his believers, it was a miracle movement across the world. It's what affected our whole Western civilization, what we're built on and, and what there's a shaking and a quaking in, in all of the earth, in every country and nation, there is this shaking that he meets. <laughs> oh man, Lord, this is just, To him be the glory. To him be the glory in all of our lives. It is, it's intense. <laughs> it's intense. And, um, you know, to him be the glory. He, he deserves it. He's, he is far above all of, of all ability of any human being. He is far above any beautiful thing in creation. He is who breathes beauty into every living being and has given us our breath and it makes things work together and function in his order and his perfect order. Um, and we can try to like piecemeal together based off of our wounding and who we think we would match with and, and, and break laws of, you know, even humanity that, that just to get to those places that feel good inside of us. But all of that is like, doesn't line up. It, it falls short of who he is and his glory and his beauty and how he manifests himself. There's like just authority that. And so he's authority in that. So he is showing his authority in his children. And that is exciting. That's exciting. Every revival known to man has been that and it brings conviction to the world and it brings judgment in places that need judgment. And then it brings his glory. So <clears throat> um, I've been reading in first Samuel and feeling the conviction of the Lord. Um, not only in, like, in myself, um, but just as it pertains to the church by and large. Um, you know, the first couple chapters, the first four chapters of First Samuel are so sweet and so beautiful talking about what pleases Yahweh, what pleases God. And um, that is the simplicity of faith, of love, of his faith and love in display of this broken humanity. And, and it's... It's just, it's a sweet story about a woman that had a rival, had another, you know, sister wife, so to speak, who had everything and she had nothing and nothing to show for. And, but her husband loved her and preferred her, something in her he preferred and he, when he would go and give sacrifices at the temple, um, once a year, he, and he would, you know, eat the food and give a portion to everybody in the family. He would give Hannah a double portion and, you know, like she, she, probably agitated the sister wife and and then Hannah's like I don't I don't know why 
he loves me, but he loves me and I can't give him babies. And, and the things that would identify her as a beautiful woman, as lovable, she didn't have that. She, she didn't. And, um, you know, I think that is such a relatable human experience is, you know, like, I think we all in some shape or form have experienced enough trauma in our life to have fears and to have these feelings where our identity is found in some aspect of of ourselves or what we hope to be or strive to be and are not. And I have a somebody knocking on the door. So I'm going to turn this off for a moment. Who is it? Oh, it didn't pause. Um, I don't know. Let me see. So she can maybe do your day if you want to switch. There are, all three girls are doing a sleepover tonight. Okay. That's a, that's an easy one. <laughs> an easy yes. So, um, oh, I'm talking on okay. video. Yeah. Um, I was just saying that was an easy decision for you. Cause it's like an, it's, you're only feeding yourself, dad, me, and grandma. Um, we all take turns making meals, uh, at our house. So, um, I don't know if my microphone is even going to pick up all this exchange or if it's even picking up my voice right now, but I'm just going with this because this is where I feel like the Lord has me. Yahweh has me. So I was talking about first Samuel and I was talking about Hannah and I was talking about how she had nothing. And, um, and the way she viewed herself was like, you know, like I don't, I don't have anything. Um, and, but she went to God and she went to him in desperation in such a way where she made her face known in a temple and crying out where the priest then thought she was a wayward woman. Um, and there were wayward women that were hanging around that place because it's talked about as sons and, and just, you know, the depravity that they were engaging in. And so anyway, she was there making her requests, making her petitions, crying out to God. And it, when the priest saw her, he took note that he felt like he had to say something. It was a judgment he was speaking to her. But when she was like, listen, this is just me crying out to God. Like I am, I am all of me is doing what I can to just cry out to him. And he then meets her with whatever it is that your, your request, let that be because I see it and, and I, and I bless it. And, um, and so I mean, that's a huge blessing for anybody to, to receive. And I believe that's what he's doing on this earth. I believe he's doing it in especially survivor's life, people who've gone through lots of trauma. Like he's just bringing healing and restoration, um, you know, the Lord's work. And so anyway, um, yeah, so that's first, you know, the first couple chapters and then it goes into Samuel hearing God's voice and the judgment in the house of Eli, like the, the priest and his sons and like, and then it just like gets really convicting. Cause like the state of Israel was not in a good place. Um, they had 
you know, a circuit writer type of judge, Samuel, who would, um, you know, like make offerings in, in various places um, to, you know, intercede. But like the people wanted a king and they wanted to be like the other nations. They, they wanted, that's what they thought security would bring was a king. And this is where, you know, the rubber meets the road, I think, in the church um, for generations. Who, who are we looking for? Are we looking for comfort in nation states? Are we, you know, looking for um, some sort of national type of, you know, liberties and freedoms that, you know, separate us from other uh, believers and other um, and nations and, and whatnot, or um, are we looking for a king to come and to be the rightful judge and who is otherworldly, not, not of this world, so shouldn't be a threat to presidents and kings and, you know, like, because they are man too, they're created beings too, and they're made in God's image, and God does have a function for nations, and, and it talks about in Revelation, there are going to be nations that that, you know, God's children, his elect, those that are beheaded for their faith, and those that um, just translate their body, like translates into a glorified state, that they, um, they judge, and they're part of the nations, like judging the nations, and, um, and, you know, the character of God is such where he, he rules from, a mercy seat, his mercy seat. That is an eternal and heavenly throne that um, is coming down <laughs> in, 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 you know, what's called Mount Zion on his mountain and is the New Jerusalem um, that is, you know, over um, all nations and including, um, you know, nation of Israel, his, his very chosen people. And there are a lot of, you know, theology and doctrine into what pleases God. And these are, you know, traditions of men that have been esteemed for, you know, century and millennia, like for a very long time. Um, and have been added to by very wise, what are considered wise men in the world standards. And, um, but it is, it is God that Yahweh, the, the true creator that, um, is the one who esteems. He's the one that he esteems a man. He, he sees, the lowly of heart, and that's what Israel always was to him, was a, a, a low, like, it was a people that recognized their need for him. They moved out of Babylon. They, um, you know, they moved away from that system of, you know, trying to uh, build a kingdom, a man's kingdom unto God uh, that Nimrod created that I believe was demonically influenced according to the word of God, they moved away from that to follow the unknown God who, who has a step out on an unknown territory and, and says that we're, we please him because of our faith. And, you know, he doesn't force us to do what, you know, he has for us. Like Egyptians might have forced enslavement. He provides, um, salvation. He provides a way out and invites us, but we're willing participants. We have to willingly leave Egypt. We have to willingly walk through wildernesses and allow 
him to prove himself in us and allow there to be like a deeper leaning on him of like so that he we finally are leaning out of the wilderness and he calls us beautiful and I mean that's exciting for me to be able to speak that and prophesy that and articulate that according to the word of God is exciting to me and that it's an honor to be able to say that and it's not going to be understood by every man that hears that this is going to be you know like throwing around vocabulary that's threatening to some people to some you know even very very super you know traditional and and um you know adhere to these traditions strongly these these uh schools of thought and of like theology and you know it, it, things that i say or how i do or how i you know the manner of relating that is contrary to those traditions can agitate and cause you know this sense of like fear in someone where they would could want to retaliate and hurt you know those that are even wanting to speak the truth but those that don't shy back from death and those that are willing to say here i am lord use me speak through me take your burning coal purify my lips so that i speak your word God, you know my heart, you know, like, you know my, the deficiencies of my life, you know how the enemy can come and attack me and X, Y, Z, and, and all these different accusations, yet I trust you to protect me. That is what pleases him. That's the sort of faith. It's a willingness. It's not a forced coercion on his part. Whether I choose to share this on Facebook or YouTube or social media, you know, on any platform, or whether I choose to keep this to myself, that is a matter of conviction and me walking that out with him. My hope is that I'll have a willingness to put it on YouTube if he sees fit and, you know, I run it by the certain coverings that I follow, you know, before I make that sort of decision which is my husband predominantly because he's he is biblically my leader he's the head over um my family and there's protection there although there is you know we both have a wealth of you know input in decisions and he doesn't just he's there's a lot of submission that goes on in our home and and everybody <laughs> But he serves us well. I mean, he he's a servant leader. So there is not an abuse of power there. Um, with all that said, you know, if there were areas where I felt like this is sin, he can't lead in this, I, I have pastoral leadership that I believe God, by his Holy Spirit, Yahweh, his Holy Spirit that he left his church, brought into my life as covering to spiritual covering to run things by sh should there be like some deficiency within the covering of, in our home so like these are the beautiful things that god structures his order that is ordered it has order but it's not according to <clears throat> the additions of traditions of man and so there is this Going back to 1 Samuel, going back to Saul and having a king established in Israel, it was never God's pleasure to establish an earthly king. It was a grievous thing for God. It's a prophetic sign for what that brings in his in his body when we have an earthly king and and how that played out over you know the the past 2000 years plus um you know when the northern kingdom and southern kingdom and the divide and the scattering and then judah coming back but there was just a lot there's been like just you know israel has <laughs> they love god but they've been persecuted by a lot of peoples, you know, like wanting to take over and, and, and 
because they have the one true living God, and that is Yahweh. And, you know, he, he makes himself known to us, anyone on this earth, um, and he reveals himself as being the God of Israel and, and, and recognizes himself as being the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and recognizes himself um, to going to that people group, being born to that people group and becoming the first of many, the scattering, you know, the, the, all the lost house of Israel that Judah couldn't save. Like he became the seed that would bring healing to the nations, healing to Judah, healing to all of Israel. And he, as king, is coming again as king. And um, I want him to know me well. Like, I want him to know me as a messenger that speaks that and has spoken that in different areas and times of my life, even in my timidity. And as I'm, like, stepping out of that into who he's called me be who he says I am, not who I've said I am or what other people have put on me or any program. He's canceled all of that and he is proving himself to me in all these places in my life that haven't known him well and he's doing that same thing large, like all over the earth, all over the earth and I'm trusting him to cover me as he's doing that and as he is having other people speak and it's encouraging all of all of us and so you know it's on youtube it's in the olympics it's through athletes it's through even hollywood those um actors and actresses that are coming to the lord and you know have been in the wilderness and like having the holy spirit speak to them god's truth and then finding voice to speak up, you know, past the principalities in Hollywood and powers in Hollywood and past these places where there has been dominion and a hold. It's been like Joseph that's been in the prison that the Lord has righteously removed out of prison and made head over all of Egypt. Like, that's huge. And he's doing that in his bride. So that's, I'm trusting him in that process to protect me, to protect my identity, to protect who he says I am, to protect my sanity, the mind that I have in him, um, and to protect, you know, what he's doing, like what he's doing in my family and my community. That's him. That's, that's not me. That's, you know, I'm not the one that brought all this good. So I need to continue to walk in him trusting as I'm doing my part. And as he emboldens me to do my part, that he is going to do his part. So um, this is well over 30 minutes, and I thought that I was going to sing and I was going to worship, um, but I think that the Lord, you know, had me share more from, um, you know, First Samuel, what I'm reading and, and that, and what I've been meditating on when it comes to the state of the world, the state of our nation, um, and Christians, um, who are we calling out to? The challenge is who are we calling out to as king? Are we fixing our eyes on an earthly kingdom or a heavenly kingdom that's coming down? What do we spend time listening to and meditating on? Is it building our own kingdom? Or is it advancing God's kingdom? And then the anxieties of our heart, taking note of those things. What is catching our heart's passion? And... Uh, 